Hi, and welcome to the Texas Book Festival panel on Lady Bird and Linden. My name is Carol Dawson, and uh, I love being a moderator every year at the Texas Book Festival, and I particularly love this task this year because I've had the privilege of reading two books that interlock so beautifully that it provided one whole 360 degree ex experience in reading them. Before we begin and I introduce our authors, I want to remind you all that all proceeds of book sales at the Texas Book Festival go to the libraries of this great state. So please, avail yourselves of the book tent, and after the, our session is over, the book signing tent, where you can get both of the signatures of these two wonderful gentlemen on the front pieces of your books. Now, <clears throat> our panel today, as you know, is about Lady Berg Johnson, an oral history, and involves a total of 18 years worth of uh, interviews with Lady Bird Johnson and Indomitable Will, LBJ, in the presidency. The interesting thing about these books is that Lady Bird's memories and history lead up to the presidency and where it leaves off, Mark Up de Grove's book about LBJ begins and is a tapestry of voices commenting about Lyndon B. Johnson. Michael Gillette, who assembled Lady Bird's oral history, directed the LBJ Library's oral history program from 1976 to 1991. He later served as director of the Center for Legislative Archives at the National Archives and is currently the executive director of Humanities Texas in Austin. He is the author of Launching the War on Poverty, an oral history. To my right, Mark Updegrove is the current director of the Lyndon Bain Johnson Presidential Library and Museum in Austin, Texas, a post he assumed in October of 2009. An award-winning author and presidential historian, Updegrove has written three books relating to the American presidency. Indomitable Will, LBJ and the Presidency, was published by Crown in March of 2012. Baptism by Fire, Eight Presidents Who Took Office in Times of Crisis in 2009, and Second Acts, Presidential Lives and Legacies After the White House. Mark Updegrove spent much of his career at Time Magazine, first as President of Time Canada in Toronto, then as Los Angeles manager. He has also been a publisher of Newsweek magazine and a vice president of sales, marketing, and operations for Yahoo Canada. So he is obviously covering the digital ground as well as the historical and archival ground. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you both for these marvelous books. I have had such a good time reading them and reading the overlaps and the discrepancies. The first thing I want to bring up actually is a very interesting discrepancy between the two. These two people who came together in marriage, Lady Bird Johnson and Lyndon Johnson, were incredibly different personalities. I'm sure most, if not all of you, are familiar with the idiosyncrasies and famous legends about LBJ's, uh, shall we say, irascibility, crudeness, uh, larger-than-life personality, contradictory nature, and absolute will to get things done. And the things he got done were very important things. He could not have done these things, it is my belief, especially after reading these books, without Lady Bird. Lady Bird Johnson, born Claudia Alta Taylor, was an incredibly gracious Southern woman who grew up in semi-tomboyish practices and surroundings very near Caddo Lake in Far East Texas, in Karnak. The fact that she grew up in a town named after a famous 
Egyptian temple I have always found very interesting. Not far from Elysian Fields, by the way. Um, but she grew up isolated. LBJ grew up very much a part of a community, but in a very different part of Texas. When they came together, they formed a balance that I think is one of the most interesting marital histories in the history of political America. The one thing that I want to implode real quickly is how Lady Bird got her nickname. How many of you have heard the story that she was named by her African-American nurse when she was about two years old because she was as purty as a ladybird. Please raise your hands. This is what Mr. Updegrove <laughs> tells us in his book. But Mike Gillette has something else to tell us entirely. And I'm going to let him tell us his particular story of how that came to be. Well, she told me that the name was actually given to her by her two African-American playmates, Stuff and Doodlebug. And uh, of course, Ladybird is, a, is another word for Ladybug. Uh, apparently, it was decided later, at some point, uh, that it needed, the name needed to be attributed to her adult nurse, Alice Tittle, because uh, uh, to do otherwise might give the indication of social interaction between the, the races and uh, but uh, and I've never read that anywhere else but that's what she told me anyway take it for what it's worth isn't that fascinating it's like the precursor to the Civil Rights Act this this uh, conversation's taken a nasty turn since I found out I got my facts wrong <laughs> You know, you got so many other facts right in your book, I don't think you need to worry. Uh, I would like you each to talk a little bit, starting with you, Mark, about the different facets and aspects of the personalities to which you were privy, uh, in particular, in your case, LBJ, and, and some of the dynamics and contradictions in LBJ's personality as reflected by the many voices that you have included in this book. Well, I'm looking at, at, at in the audience, uh, we need to acknowledge two people, one of whom is uh, Harry Middleton. Harry uh, was the uh, first director of the LBJ Library, my predecessor's predecessor, my dear friend, and so much of the scholarship about Lynn and Lady Bird Johnson comes from the work that Harry did at the LBJ Library. And the other one sitting next to him is Shirley James, who worked for Mrs. Johnson for many years and who recently prevailed uh, with the United States Post Office in getting a, a postage stamp that honors uh, Lady Bird Johnson, which will be out later this year. Uh, a friend of, uh, of mine and, and of, of Harry's and Shirley's is named Bob Hardesty, and he was a speechwriter like Harry for Lyndon Johnson. And I think he put it very aptly when he said, allowing for shades of subtlety, there were as many LBJs as there were people who knew him. And as often as not, the people they saw were contradictory. And I think that says so much about LBJ. He treated everybody differently. Because I think it, it, uh, Hubert Humphrey called him the world's best psychologist. He understood how to get people who mattered to say yes. And that meant treating people in very different ways. So that's why I think that one of the reasons that people saw him so differently from person to person. Thank you. Mike, would you please talk a little bit about what you discovered about Lady Bird's personality through your many, many interviews with her and the interviews that you read that she had given? Well, I remember at one point um, when I was directing the oral history program under Harry Middleton's leadership, I might add, for, for 20 years, uh, we had a a contract transcription service come in and, and transcribe maybe 500 interviews that had never been transcribed under the, uh, the project that UT had done that we inherited. And I asked the transcribers when they finished that project what the, what the takeaway for them was, and it was how much they came to admire Mrs. Johnson just from hearing what others said about her. 
And so that's one level. The, the other level is that uh, when, you, when you meet her, you decide.